Hey everybody, welcome back. I wanna show you how to animate a 16 by 16 sprite, draw it to the screen in Pico. So you can take your sprite sheet that looks like this and turn it into your animated character. And by the way, if you're just learning Pico 8, I would definitely recommend checking out my study guide. It's a free PDF with some of the basic things in Pico, some little notes, some handy things. There's a link down in the description or you can go to spacecatdev.com. Now, the way that we do this is not super intuitive, but I think is a really handy trick. And you can kind of use the skills from this to do a lot of things in Pico. So for our setup, we just have our little sprite here. There's four frames. And the way that you draw bigger sprites here in Pico is you just roll up and down with your mouse. By default, you only have an eight by eight square, but if you roll down with your mouse wheel, it kind of zooms out and you can even make huge sprites if you want. You can even go to the top here and look at like half the sprite sheet just about. So you can zoom this out to 16 by 16 and draw your sprites this way. So let's first just get this sprite on the screen. We're gonna go back to our code. I have my init, update, and draw. And I'll just start with a clear screen, CLS, like this. And then we'll say SPR for sprite. And we need the sprite number. This is sprite one, you can tell right here. And so we'll say sprite one. And then there's a couple arguments for the sprite function. The first is the sprite number. The second is the X position. So let's just do that at 56. And the Y position is 56. And I'll close that parentheses and hit control S and control R to run. So all we have is a black screen with the top left corner of our sprite. So how do we add the rest of that sprite? Well, the next couple arguments are the width and height in tiles of the sprite, which is going to be two by two. Two eight by eight tiles wide and two eight by eight tiles tall. Now we hit save and run and there's our sprite in the middle. Yay, we did it. But how do we animate him? Well, typically when we want to animate a sprite, We'll have sprite one, sprite two, sprite three, and sprite four. And we'll just cycle through them like this. One, two, three, four. And that kind of thing happens basically this way. You'd need a variable for your sprite. So let's just say SP. And we'll start that with whatever number we start with. So let's say sprite nine. So sprite nine. And then every frame, if SP is less than whatever this last number is, nine, less than 12, so less than 13, is less than 13, then sp equals sp plus one, else sp equals the first one, which is nine. And then we'll switch out this number one for sp like this, and we'd have that just one tile wide here, save run, oops, sp equals sp plus one, save run. And now we have these moving and giving everyone some medical problems, which is not a good idea. So we can turn the speed of the animation down by just doing something like upping it by a variable and then turning this to like 12.9 and we hit save and run. And now it will flip through the different frames like that. And that works well. And so that's a great way to animate an eight by eight sprite, but with a 16 by 16 sprite, it skips sprite numbers. So this one's sprite one, but then this one's sprite three and sprite five and sprite seven. And so there'd be some tricky math to make this start with sprite one, and then skip one and go to sprite three and then skip one and go to sprite five. So I'll show you an easy way to kind of do that. What we'll do is we'll put all of these sprite numbers into a table and then we can just run through the table instead of the sprite numbers, okay? So the table's gonna have the numbers one, three, five, and seven. And let's call the table frames. Frames equals curly bracket one comma three comma five comma seven and the curly bracket. And so now these are all the frames of our animation. So we can use almost the same thing to just go through the frames of our animation here. But instead of instead of starting with nine, we're gonna start with one. Instead of ending at 12.9, we'll end at 4.9. You'll see why here in a second. Now we're gonna do something crazy. Here, instead of just feeding the sprite function that SP, we're going to feed it one of these frames and we're gonna use this SP to tell it which frame to feed it. So we'll do that here by just saying frames. And then inside of these box bracket things, we're gonna type FLR for floor and then SP. And we're also gonna turn these to two by two. And now we have our little guy animating. So what this is doing is this SP is going to be between one and four with this. So every frame, it's going to add 0.1 to it. And it's either gonna be one, 1.1, 1 1.2, 1.3, .1 and so on, all the way up to 4.9. And then once it gets to 4.9 and it goes through the next frame, it's gonna switch this back to one. And so it's always going to be between one and five basically. So this is from one all the way to 4.9 and then floor rounds it down to the nearest integer. 
So if this is 1.6, it's gonna round it down to one. If this is 2.7, it's gonna round it down to two. If this is 4.9, it's gonna round it down to four. And so we end up getting one, two, three, or four here in our frames, here in this bracket. So it'd either be one, two, three, or four. And what that does is it goes into this frames table and it either picks position one, position two, position three, or position four. And then it feeds this number into our sprite function. And it gives us either sprite one, sprite three, sprite five, or sprite seven. So it's really cool doing it this way because you can add whatever sprites you want in here. In fact, we could even save some space. We don't have to have four different drawings here because sprite one and sprite five are the same. I can just get rid of sprite five. And instead of five right here, I'll just put one. And so we'll just repeat that same frame. And guess what? It works the same. So we can actually save a little bit of space doing it this way. Pretty smart, pretty slick. So yeah, that's pretty much how it works. If you wanna do a simple kind of eight by eight sprite animating it over four frames, you can just add a decimal to each frame. And then when it gets almost off of it, you just loop back to the first one or with any kind of animation, including the eight by eight, but especially useful with the 16, you can add each of these sprites to a table, one, three, one, seven, and then use this same kind of decimal counting up this floor to round that down to the nearest integer and pick the frame that you want and kind of loop through all of these frames. Really cool way to do it. And now we have a nice little animation here. Maybe we'll make him go a little bit faster. 0 0.3, 4.7. This is just gonna be five minus whatever this number is. Save run. And now he's walking. There's our little guy. I think a really cool way to animate things in Pico 8. Hey, if you have any requests for Pico 8 tutorials, let me know. Again, if you're just learning Pico 8, make sure to check out this study guide. There's a link in the description. But that does it for me. I hope you guys have a great, wonderful, amazing, well-animated day.